afternoon and good morning from Almaty. I am Marlies Linke, head of the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung uh, Central Asia office. Our office is located in Almaty, um, but our work is related to the entire region, more or less, of Central Asia. We work together with partners in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. Uh, I say good afternoon because I am about to introduce our interview partners in Almaty and Dushanbe. And I say good morning because our interview will be recorded now and broadcast as a part of the third night of social rights that the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung office in Geneva, together with other offices of our organization worldwide and uh, partner organizations and experts uh, is organizing and uh, will broadcast it um, from December 9th to December 10th. So one of the aims of our organization is, uh, especially in the program work here in Central Asia, to strengthen, strengthen the development of a socially just and inclusive society here. That's why we take the uh, anniversary of the uh, adoption of the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights in uh, 1948 as a good date to remember that these rights exist, that they are there for everyone, and that we are ready to base our work on these declaration on this declaration, and I would say not only on the initial one, but all the other ones that have developed on uh, the basis of this very first. I said I would like to introduce our interview partners. Let me welcome very cordially here, Ms. Sahira Begalieva. Sahira is the chairperson of the public foundation I Teach Me Competence Development Center here in Kazakhstan. She is uh, very much a specialist when it comes to really protecting the right, rights of people or persons with disabilities, but is not limiting her work to this. I think as everybody whom we are going to hear today, part of the work is really to stretch out the hand and make understandable that working with and for people with disability means actually changing the entire society. So that's why I'm also saying hello to uh, Ulan Inkarbekov. Uh, Ikarbekov. I see that there is a mistake. Uh, Ulan is uh, the head of the uh, uh, um, Association of Persons with Disabilities here in the city of uh, Almaty. Um, we have uh, invited both of our counterparts from uh, um, Kazakhstan, because uh, we know that their organizations and they personally have uh, um, really made a very interesting contribution to changing the situation for people here in a very practical way, for people with disabilities and also enabling the entire, if you want so, oh, now we have lost Ulan. Ah, there, Ulan is coming back. <laughs> Um, I would like to move on to Tajikistan and uh, introduce the head of the National Association of People with Disabilities of Tajikistan, uh, Asudlaw Tsikri Khudoyev. We are very happy that uh, you, we have been in contact already for many years and uh, Everybody who is in the round today as uh, interview partner uh, had the chance not only to talk to the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, but the ties between organizations of people with disabilities and working for people with disabilities in the region of Central Asia are much stronger and have been established much longer. 
but this is a point that I would like to talk about later on. Let me return to our starting point. Um, the convention, of, why, we, why did we choose this topic? Starting point of the third night of social rights is, as I said, the anniversary of the adoption of universal human rights. Social rights are indispensable for everyone. They lay the ground for a dignified and empowered life. Social inclusion for all members of society is a moving target. International law requires states to realize social rights progressively and ensuring that they are always guaranteed equally to everyone without discrimination. The International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights is the primary legal source for ensuring these rights. Our organization, or our office as part of the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung, uh, has been working since 2019 with various organizations of persons with disabilities from Central Asia. And that's why we have chosen to commemorate not only the 75th anniversary of the universal rights uh, of human rights, but um, we add to this that on the 3rd of December is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. This is usually a day when the rights that this special group of persons have are not only commemorated, but they are really brought into the or to the attention of the public. We want to make sure that we supporting this because we see that the Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the optional protocol to it con, uh, really are documents that can be used as an instrument to uh, strengthen these rights and uh, make the life of not only this group of persons more fulfillable, easier, and maybe um, give them a chance to participate in a much better way, but to make the entire society understand that this is really an important group for the entire society. I think that um, in the preamble of this Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, there are statements that I think uh, need to be recalled in the daily work. It reads, the state parties to the present convention are recognizing that the United Nations in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, has proclaimed and agreed that everyone is, agree uh, is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth therein without distinction of any kind. And it's reaffirming that the university, uh, university, universality, indivisibility, interdependence, interrelatedness of all human rights and fundamental freedoms, and the need for persons with disabilities to be, to be guarantees in their full enjoyment without discrimination. The convention is not a new invention. This convention is actually um, a solid basis that has been uh, signed by several states, also in our region and Central Asia. Kazakhstan, for instance, signed the convention in 2008 and ratified it in 2015. Tajikistan signed it in 2018 and uh, is in the process to ratify it. And I would be happy to hear a little bit more maybe about the progresses, uh, the progress that had been made in this process, that this is not a matter of a small minority, but um, we are actually dealing here with a rather large number of persons. I would like to illustrate with the fact that Tajikistan has 10 million inhabitants and 160,000 
of them are persons with disabilities. This is about 1.7% of the population. 34,000 of them are children. I would like to add that um, in the preamble of the Convention of the Rights of uh, Persons with Disabilities is also emphasized that mainstreaming disability issues is an integral or should be seen as an integral part of uh, relevance of developing relevant strategies of sustainability uh, development. For me, key words in our work that are related not only to the specific rights of people with disabilities, but uniting their situation with the entire um, development of the societies here in the region are accessibility, mobility, safety, including the right to liberty and security as persons, as health. The preamble of the convention also points at recognizing the valued existing and potential contributions made by persons with disabilities to the overall well-being and diversity of their communities. Here, I would like to introduce the key words in the work that I see here in the region, living independently and being included in the community, and that uh, a precondition for that is to be enabled to receive a good education. Work and employment are also key factors. Let me come to the questions that I would like to ask our participants in the very first round of um, this interview. How would you describe in your country the situation of person with disabilities? And what is the importance of the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in improving the situation of people with disabilities in your own country? What progress has already been made? So now I'm looking at my interview partners and um, I would like to give the floor to Sahira. Would you like to start? And I would like Ulan then maybe to um, comment on that because you both are from Kazakhstan and Kazakhstan uh, has made a lot of progress in that field already. But I think we are coming later to the point that exactly the exchange between the different countries is an important key in moving forward here. So how would you respond to my questions. What is the situation of person with disabilities in Kazakhstan? Can you hear me? I do hope so. Thank you very much, Marlies, for inviting us to such a significant event as this interview focusing on human rights and especially people with disabilities because more often than not in the overall so to say flow of challenges and issues people with disabilities find themselves neglected and their interests are disregarded as to the people with disabilities, after the moment of ratification of the convention, indeed, Kazakhstan has made significant progress to a significant extent, thanks to the most active representatives of this group of people who have been promoting the rights and interests of uh, people with disabilities in their day to day work not only on political level, but also on the most routine, on the most grassroots level, meaning that it's not only political, high level rights, but specifically the need that people with disabilities want to live in 
normal condition. So it has to become a norm and not an exception that a person with disabilities gets education or starts his or her occupation. So from the point of view of state policy, multiple laws and bylaws have been adopted. One of the most significant achievements was that we shifted away from the term invalid or in we officially now use the term people with disabilities because positioning a person so it highlights the distinction between or the hierarchy of rights first we should be taking care taking care of our human rights and um, then of course the rights of people with disabilities the digitalization which is taking place in Kazakhstan has helped us a lot as well. For example, we or people with disabilities no longer need to move from distant villages to cities in order to get some rights or social benefits. As Since I specialize in digital occupations and the professional training of uh, persons with disabilities, we have entered the term distant education and distant or remote employment for persons with disabilities. And it is a great legal norm and the mechanism that um, people with disabilities, persons with disabilities can learn. So many, more, many, many more people, persons with disabilities now have this opportunity. As to accessibility and mobility, it's only, unfortunately, it's only still only about big cities and uh, maybe large government organizations going deep into the country's um, constituencies of course mobility and accessibility is still an issue access of inf access to information we have achieved quite a good level but there is still a need to improve the quality of uh, information services to persons with uh, hearing disabilities with uh, mental disabilities so there are still things to do still room for improvement as to orientation and um, rehabilitation, the state has been taking active steps to provide the person with disabilities with uh, rehabilitation means. We have um, state-supported rehabilitation programs, but the selection um, is still done by images or by pictures. And so not always uh, persons with disabilities can come to these rehabilitation centers and um, you know get into these wheelchairs a test whether they're comfortable for them another challenge is the lack of monitoring of the situation with the protection of uh, the rights of persons with disabilities so the monitoring is done but it is done chaotically not systemically maybe ulan will supplement and continue what i've said indeed i wanted to actually give the floor to to give the floor to ulan you are also working in that field and you have an experience maybe in a little bit different part of uh, that i had yes um, hello allow me to seize this opportunity to extend gratitude for to, for this for the participation in the interview it is really great that you are doing such things as i hear my colleague has um, given some of the details indeed a lot of things have happened uh, since 2004 after kazakhstan has ratified the convention as well as the the optional protocol so a lot of changes have taken in the medical field or from the medical point of view a lot of work lawmaking work is is ongoing is underway in Kazakhstan trying um, aimed at um, expanding the opportunities and the capabilities of people with, of persons with disabilities as um, a person using a wheelchair myself and um, working 18 hours a day, I can say that this program and the legal and lawmaking initiatives that have taken place in Kazakhstan recently have expanded our opportunities and capabilities very much. 
As to communication with government organizations, our relations have become much, much better. Our ministers have become more open. Akims or a local administration heads have hired designated staff persons and consultants. I'm sorry, counselors who actually are closing the gap between the person in the wheelchair and uh, local administrations. As you know, local Maslikats uh, in Majlis, there are seven persons with disabilities working. Local Maslikats have a person with disabilities. We have a senator who is a person who is sitting in the wheelchair. Another representative, NGO representative, who is also engaged in government organization. So it's it's become much easier to address different issues on the government level. As to access and mobility, accessibility, there is still a lot of challenges because psychologically people have not transformed. And so there is still this mindset or of a distinction between persons without and with disabilities. And so we are currently actively working to shift, to change this mindset. Sometimes we get even negative responses. Sometimes people, persons with disabilities cannot leave their apartments just for the mere reason that we've lived in the Soviet Union and the architecture was uh, standardized and typical and there were six steps that so in some places we we'll still see these uh, physical or physical barriers but the government has been allocating significant uh, budget means to refit to update to fix these entrances to the dwelling houses with the racks and sometimes the it is not possible to install in special elevators for persons with disabilities in our but um, in apartment blocks but a new um, member has just entered the Committee on Urban Development, and he's also a person with disability. Once again, I'm highlighting that more and more persons with disabilities are entering into various um, legal or executive authorities because it's uh, nobody else but the persons with disabilities know our needs and uh, requirement. We have also started traveling abroad and seeing how the rights of people of persons with disabilities are protected, for example, in Germany. So I think we're on the right track. Our life is full of combat, or our life is a battle, and we will continue combating and battling for our rights. This great wave of optimism. I know that uh, making even small steps ahead is a day-to-day -day struggle, and uh, well, if I may, let me add the following. One of the key things that we're working on is employment of persons with disabilities. So, as per Kazakhstan's legislation, two to three percent of um, personnel in any organization should be persons with disabilities and our government has been allocating money to make workplaces comfortable for the persons with disabilities but as my colleagues here has mentioned we need to monitor this closer it doesn't mean that a person with disability with a disability or a person in a wheelchair will had a corporation but because so once again um, employment of persons with disabilities is still represents an issue i challenge Ulan, you have um, gone to the second stage i guess um, to the second question because i wanted to ask 
because I wanted to ask about the situation in Tajikistan prior to discussing some of the challenges. Uh, I would like really to give you the floor now to describe what the situation is. Maybe you have a little bit more time because the second person whom we have invited as a speaker from uh, Dushanbe has not joined yet. Um, uh, Kutra Dolor Kurbanov uh, is uh, the head of the Department of Social Protection of the Population with the Ministry of Health and uh, Social Protection of the Population of the Republic of uh, Tajikistan. In case during the meeting somebody extra is joining, so this is uh, our second um, voice from uh, Tajikistan, but in the moment, I hope that Asud Law can make full use of the time in order to really say where people with disabilities find themselves when it comes to uh, being honored in their rights and what has been achieved already. In the second round of questions, I would like, that's why the feedback to Ulan, I would like to go into the future and hear what challenges are you facing and what you are still to work on. So, as a law, the floor is, floor is yours. Once again, dear colleagues, uh, hello and thank you, Marlies, for the invitation. It is my honor and pleasure to participate in this interview. Of course, especially on the eve of the International Day of Human Rights on December the 10th. And prior to this day, we conduct various festivities and events to celebrate people with persons with disabilities. Indeed, today, this year we are celebrating the 75th um, anniversary of uh, the International Declaration of Human Rights, which includes uh, two covenants on social, economic, cultural, and then economic and political rights. Persons with disabilities are should be recognized as equal to other citizens and shall have the right for the protection of their rights and acknowledgement of these rights by a given government, a given country where such a given person with disabilities lives. As to the situation in Tajikistan, it is the following. Speaking of the social economic standing or situation, we can say that everything is okay. And the economic opportunities are okay they allow persons with disabilities live a decent life not only live not only exist but live live decently as to the overall situation allow me to point um, refer to the significant significant achievements in the sphere in the course of the most recent last five ten years the state has been paying much more attention. The government has been has started to pay much more attention to the to the issues, to the interests and rights of persons with disabilities. So um, we can say that sometimes when the government um, is not willing or is not able to help our organization, they at least do not intervene in our activities. The laws, the legislation regulating or pertaining to the rights of the persons with disabilities. About 250 different um, non-government organizations working with um, diff people, persons with different um, forms of um, disabilities are operating in Tajikistan, promoting their rights, actively protecting their rights. Also, The organizations pr protecting the rights of persons with disabilities now can unite, can combine their efforts. And so this platform, this approach and the strategy 
approved, adopted by the government, by the state, actually fosters our cooperation, collaboration among such NGOs. Another very important driver are the successes and achievements of our neighboring countries. By collaborating on the regional level, exchanging our experiences and practices with um, other NGOs from Central Asia, adopting their best practices, I think this allows us to move forward as well. The key achievement that we have achieved so far was the signing or acceding to the conference, to the convention in 2018, and our president's participation in the UN General Assembly. This demonstrates that the Republic of Tajikistan acknowledges the rights of persons with disabilities, not only on the national level, but likewise on the international level. Yes, in order to ratify this document, the government of the Republic of Tajikistan decided to get ready for that. So, based on joint efforts, we have adopted the National Action Program on ratifying the Convention. And the strategy spans the time period until 2020 or maybe 2021 in order to take account of the opinions of uh, persons with disabilities. But once again, we see that the government is no longer neglecting the rights and the interests of the persons with disabilities and is willing to do something to protect the rights of this category of population. This program that I mentioned before in the strategy was elaborated with the with direct participation of persons with disabilities. And this document opens great opportunities for us to do something that we couldn't even dream before. So this national action program is undergoing implementation. For example, on December the 1st, we plan to, or December the 10th, we plan to organize event to review the progress in implementing the International Convention. And we hope that next year, the Republic of Tajikistan will ratify the convention. Within the framework of the same action program, Kazakhstan's experience on having designated uh, counselors on persons with disabilities and the engagement and the initiatives of uh, the Rosa Luxembourg Stiftung in Central Asia has played a significant role. We hope to get this mechanism to implement this mechanism of uh, counselors in uh, Tajikistan as well. A couple of weeks ago, I visited Almaty and talked to several representatives of uh, Almaty City Akimat. So very soon they will adopt the corresponding bylaws. So I'm telling you all this um, because um, this would not have happened if we're, we were not pursuing these goals, uh, pursuing these objectives in our day-to-day -day life. If we hadn't kept talking about these things every day, about the importance of uh, the international conventions and uh, covenants, then about the importance of adopting thematic corresponding national action programs. So we have become more vocal. The government organizations started listening to us, hearing what we say. So it seems that we have achieved a lot. In the nearest future, we want to see the representative of um, persons with disabilities in our parliament. They've already established a regular or permanent working group on the protection of the rights of persons with disabilities in the parliament. And of course, enhancing the capacities and uh, capacities of persons with disabilities. It depends. So I think the more awareness raising campaigns we conduct explaining to persons with disabilities what their rights and uh, opportunities for them are, the better. The more they will 
learn about that. We should not be forget of anything. We should be very reasonable, wise, and rational in meeting the representatives of government organizations, explaining to them, to them what we want to achieve. And I think this way we will be able to achieve even more success. Thank you. Thank you very much to all three of you, because I have the impression that I don't have to ask the second round. My second prepared question was, what challenges are to be addressed in the context that we are working in here? What shall be strengthened and how does sharing experience with other organizations dealing with similar issues helps you? So the answer is partly already here in the open. Um, I still would like to stress that for me, for instance, when preparing for that interview, I was reading uh, the convention text again. Uh, and I see that um, there are many things that in our work really play an enormous role. For instance, the statement that recognizing that disability is an ev evolving concept and that disability results from the interaction between persons with impairments and attitudinal and envir environmental barriers that hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others is something that everybody, not only those who are officially recognized as people with disabilities should take into consideration. When I said in the beginning that, um, uh, in order to be empowered to uh, make a really valuable contribution, I think this is really a uh, change of attitude of the majority that is needed. And it's not only a resource question, I think it's also a question that is related simply to behavior. Um, one of the points that I would like to make for our organization is really also connected that we would like to see many of our projects kind of interacting, not only projects that are firsthand related to the life of person, persons with disabilities, but how are urban spaces developed? Who has a possibility to determine how resources are used? Um, to what extent are questions like mobility it has been already said that moving from your flat into the public space is not easy. But if I look at, for instance, um, um, activists in Bishkek who are fighting for uh, having well paved pavement so that anybody who is um, part of the society in a city can move, be it a mother with a pram or be it somebody who is on crutches because he has broken his leg and is only temporarily impaired or somebody who is in a wheelchair doesn't make a difference for me here. This is really something that the entire society should take into consideration. Um, and what I find very interesting is what Ulan said that uh, in the past years, uh, the societies in the region are moving away from perceiving um, the state of persons with disabilities as a medical condition. So this is really a key for me for addressing these things and for interacting with each another. One of the uh, points that I would like to bring into the discussion again would be um, to what degree the implementation of the existing legal basis um, is already strong enough or where would you like to see it strengthened? To what degree monitoring is done and uh, is it effective? And of course, for me, the move towards strengthening the Institute of Advisors on matters of uh, persons with disability is uh, one of the clues here. Because this is not only social rights, there are so many other things like Ulan said, economic possibilities, economic rights, uh, the rights to take part in decision-making processes, which is partly uh, in the field of political rights, partly on decision-making on economic decisions also implied here. Maybe you can say something more about it. 
So where are you as representatives of organizations working in that field would like to see progress? What is necessary to be done? Who would like to start? I am looking at Ulan who is nodding. Would you like to start, please? Yes, thank you. We need to enhance certain laws. We are conducting monitoring sessions and we go to single and the same facilities maybe several times to see how well these laws are implemented. So the laws are there, they're good on paper, but when large organizations receive penny fines for, for example, not ensuring mobility and accessibility of their buildings, they just choose not to do anything because the fines are so small. So the execution of laws and execution of recommendations, I think, lags behind. We, need, we can enhance this category of activities. Also, our court or justice organizations Very often, persons with disabilities don't want to go to court because they will have to go to these law uh, court hearings several times, and it's not really easy for them. So we need to enhance and facilitate participation of persons with disabilities in court hearings because lawsuits and going through the court system is the best way to force or to influence uh, the organizations that want don't want to ensure accessibility. One person, unfortunately, he could not join us today. He filed a lawsuit against large banks. Very recently, they've adopted the corresponding standards to financial and banking organizations. And several in several instances, we were able to one, and based on these successes, these new standards for financial banking organizations were adopted. So the most effective way forward for us and for our colleagues in other countries is to go to court, use the law. Because monitoring per se, I am a member of several monitoring groups. We go to different places, we monitor these facilities, and we, as I mentioned before, we can come to the same one of the same organization several times. And so once again law enforcement, law implementation. Our president addressing the nation always talks about the need and the importance of implementing measures to support, to protect the rights of uh, the persons of disabilities. But I think prior to his next address to the nation, our government organizations have to report to the president what they have done as per the requests or instructions that he has highlighted in his previous address to the nation. Because there is no liability, there is no responsibility. The address of the president to the nation is, of course, a very important event, but every civil servant or different um, civil servants working on different levels of our government system um, understand it differently and very often do not fulfill what the president is telling them to do. Also in the practice of, uh, practice of uh, Asud law, but maybe you have other points that you would like to take up. Where would you like to go in the future? I know one of the projects that you're pursuing in the moment is, as you have described, uh, really organizing the legal steps in order to get mm. uh, the Institute of the Advisors on the Matters of Persons with Disabilities really. Um, yes, Marlies, thank you very much for your very relevant question. We can adopt any laws that we want. We can adopt any norms that we want. We can conduct as many monitoring sessions as possible or assessment, analysis, missions, 
assessing the efficiency of uh, our laws. But in the course of my 29 years of of protecting the rights of um, persons with disabilities and the different phases of this evolution, I came to the conclusion that if the attitude on behalf of the remaining of the remaining part of our society does not change, then so these laws and monetary emissions would would make a petty influence will would have a very poor impact. So I think it is necessary to do everything possible to explain to the society to make the society perceive us as equal members of our society. Against the background of the cultural legacy and historical legacy of the Soviet Union, where the protection of there was still distinction right between ordinary members of society and persons with disabilities, but the social and economic protection of social and economic rights was equally accessible to all members of the society, and that positively affected persons with disabilities as well. So, so we need to change, as I mentioned before, we need to do everything possible to change this mindset that a person with disability is not a person that has to be supported all the time or paid for all the time. He or she can work and contribute, benefit the society. Another thing, quotas, quotas and this so-called positive discrimination for the number of seats in the parliament or for the number of staff in a given organization, number of students in order to ensure inclusive education. So on the one hand, we're talking about the equal rights of persons with disabilities and other persons. But then on the other hand, we try to get special benefits because our opportunities, our capabilities compared to other members of the society are not equal. So on the level of decision making and on the level of participation or working in the decision making organizations, if our society sees a consultant to the head of the Akimat or to the member of parliament, sees a person with disability in such a capacity, I think we could achieve a lot and not forces on the society. I think that could change the attitude of our society. So it's not like we don't want the society perceive persons with disabilities as 100% equal to them, because physically our condition can be different. But I think we should represent persons with disabilities on equal basis in terms of our employment capacities and our potential contribution to society. So I think we should tap into the potential, which is still untapped, of the persons with disabilities. Meeting with government officials, we always say that the economic system of our country is market-based. And it has certain norms and peculiarities. Unfortunately, the government of Tajikistan The salary indexation done in Tajikistan will never improve the economic and financial standing of persons with disabilities. So I think we should work on the alternative ways for persons with disabilities to earn money to ensure their financial sustainability. But we should work not only with the government, we should work with the broader public and, of course, the society at large. 
point of view, I think this is really, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's a process. And this is not uh, to reach a certain point. The society is evolving. And also people in their self-perception as uh, people with disabilities need to change sometimes because not everybody perceives him or herself as uh, valuable, but the potential that the person has and might develop depends not only on the environment, but also on whether he or she finds the strength and support. I know, for instance, that Zahira is working in a field that is uh, becoming more and more a popular field for employment for people with disabilities. Uh, our uh, societies are stepping onto the path of digitalization. And maybe you can say a few words about the contribution that you can make to this field. I would like to agree with my colleagues in terms of uh, what we should pay attention first. First of all, we need to raise legal awareness and legal literacy of persons with disabilities themselves because we're because very often persons with disabilities identify themselves as such they do not identify themselves as uh, women as entrepreneurs as mothers or fathers who also have certain rights which can be implemented so once again enhancing legal literacy and legal awareness of persons with with disabilities so they perceive themselves as something else also digital inequality and uh, combating digital inequality we've conducted a survey we've uh, surveyed 700 people only 52 percent of our respondents did not have any digital skills and competencies. And we know that digital skills are currently the best way to good education, to employment, to getting a lot of services rendered by the government, because many of them are offered based on digital platforms. As to our specific contribution, the contribution of our organization, in order to level out this digital inequality, we train persons with disabilities on, mo on modern skills and modern careers, occupations. We provide courses in Russian, in Kazakh, and we, if we um, put together videos, we have uh, titers and citations. We also collaborate with uh, companies. For example, a company agrees to hire a person with disability, with a disability. We guide them and we work them together, work with them, explaining them what should be the corresponding conditions. So we follow a given person with a disability through the entire cycle of his or her employment until he or she gets uh, the first salary. We have over 1,000 alumni of our program across the entire Kazakhstan. Indeed, that's a huge step ahead. It's a very big step to self-empowerment of people who have been otherwise probably limited in their choices, how they can partake in the economic life and I think it helps also to empower them in the sense that they feel more as an active uh, citizen and as a qualified uh, professional, they are more likely, I think, uh, uh, to become a voice in this, I would say, already movement. I have met in the region over the past years um, very many very different organizations and people uh, with different backgrounds who are dealing with different kinds of disabilities. But I think what I really value very much is not only the optimism that I have seen, but the persistence, the perseverance, people who are very much aware that they are to qualify themselves and their environment and uh, in order to reach a result. Uh, you don't have to think about 
today and tomorrow, but uh, you're going step by step and uh, look at a much longer future. So thank you for really this kind of uh, perspective. And not only allow me to say thank you for what you have said today. I would like to point out that I have always perceived um, the organizations of people with disabilities in Central Asia as part of a network. There are so many different entries to this field, and they are existing also in the other two countries that uh, our office is active in, in Uzbekistan and in Kyrgyzstan. I have to apologize uh, before them that I, for this one hour, in order to go into the depths of the problem, decided not to have country by country representation, but uh, to make it possible to portray maybe the, also the connections that have been established between two of the four countries, because I have been, uh, should I say, privileged to be part of uh, a connection process between uh, organizations and uh, representatives of organizations of people with disability, uh, dis disabilities from Tajikistan and uh, Kazakhstan. And for me, it was very much um, a field where I could learn myself. So I, I wish really that we could uh, continue this kind of cooperation um, and link your expertise to other organizations, not only who are specifically dealing with challenges that people with disabilities face, but people who are citizens of your countries, of our region, I say. So thank you for coming to the interview. It was a pleasure to hear that again. And Thank you for your valuable time. Looking forward to seeing you all again at the next chance that we have. See you then. All the best to all of you. Goodbye, dear colleagues. See you then, dear friends.